Michael, welcome. Nice to see you. Nice to be back in that beautiful room of yours. Love it. Um, talk to us about the markets and, and whether you think now is the time to start nibbling at some of the, uh, the more the growthier names, the tech names, or whether it's still time uh, to, to play it safer. Sure. Yeah, I think this year, the the, the mantra of the market is, is it's going to be going nowhere fast. So it's really a year about positioning. When, when the S&P is up 20, 30 percent, positioning is less relevant. When the market's down a little bit or flattish on the year, it's all about positioning. And so as the world continues to slow, and I don't think there's much of a debate about that, the question is how long are we going to slow for and what's priced in? Uh, and we think the answer for the first question is we're going to be slowing into the middle of next year, and we have not priced in very much yet. Investors investors should continue positioning or repositioning their portfolio to stocks that act as countercyclicals that are less cyclical to the economy. You've got two trades going on right now, the higher rates, higher inflation trade, which is likely to end sooner than later, and then the growth slowdown trade, which has got at least another year left. So we would continue to avoid high beta stocks and expect cyclical stock leadership to continue to narrow increasingly as the slowdown continues. So as I look at your list of cells, they are, I would call them concentrated in cyclical areas like DuPont, Floor, Textron, HP, Hillenbrand, right? Yeah, there's, you know, there's a couple of different ways to pick, pick buys and sells. We do both fundamental approaches and macro approaches. This is a real pure macro approach. What we did is look at which stocks in the S&P 500 or 1500 have the highest correlation to earnings revisions. And these five stocks have correlations of earnings uh, to earnings revisions in the high 80s. So given our view that earnings revisions are headed lower and lower and lower over the foreseeable future, you don't want to be uh, having too many stocks in your portfolio that have... Uh, performance profiles that only do well when revisions are mm -hmm. moving higher. And conversely, what we think investors should increasingly embrace are stocks that can do well in an earnings slowdown. So that's names like Campbell Soup, AT&T, Eastern Government Properties, Cable One, Kimberly Clark Corp. There are many more stocks in that list, but these are stocks that have a negative correlation of about 85% to earnings revisions. So earnings revisions go down, these stocks are likely to outperform. So it's a pure macro view on, on stock selection. Um, of course, adding a fundamental overlay would, would make sense as well. Michael, it's Kelly and I'm, I'm in a cyclical mood today. So I, I want to ask you a couple of questions uh, for those of us who might be feeling this way. I look at commodity prices breaking out, right? I look at rates moving higher. I look at stocks moving higher. I look at growth holding in there. You know, all of these factors, the steepening yield curve, we're up, what, what, 40 or 50 basis points in just a couple of weeks on Tuesdays, tens. And I just think, what if there is still some cyclical momentum here? Well, I think there is some cyclical momentum, but it's, it's going to be increasingly narrow. We're even beginning to, to see stocks that typically perform well when rates go up, like banks, not performing very well. So while the market's up today and there is a cyclical tilt to leadership today, again, we look at the market since the beginning of the year, we've gone nowhere. And I don't think we're going really anywhere for the rest of the year. And so I think we're going to see a lot of volatility, a lot of gyration in stocks. And where we have the highest, most highest conviction is thinking about what's the end result of all of this increase in rates, inflation, gasoline, literally everything. We've had a shock to, to literally everything that helps to explain a slowdown. And we're going to get a growth slowdown from that. And that's how you want to be thinking uh, as opposed to reacting to, let's say, Bullard today. Well, let me put it this way, because, I, you know, we all, we all are kind of approaching it just from a different point of view. So if I said to you that the Fed is still behind the curve and that's what the market is telling us, what would you do with the market in the meantime? For the overall index, I, I think you really want to go into lower um, lower beta indices, so large cap in the U.S., I would avoid small cap, especially small cap value, would be avoiding uh, emerging markets and European equity markets that are far more cyclical, don't do well with a stronger dollar backdrop. And, and the Fed being behind the curve is only going to continue to increase the strength of the U.S. dollar or weakness elsewhere. And that's generally uh, an, an additional tightening for those markets overseas. So would be avoiding higher beta stocks, highly cyclical stocks. 
I think the, you know the, the we're in the ninth inning of this commodity trade cyclically, wow. maybe, the, uh, but we're in the second inning of this global slowdown story. Wow, and, and I should add, before, I should add, in case you haven't riled before. people enough, uh, you also say, uh, full stop, avoid Bitcoin. Yes, and Bitcoin uh, over the last three or four years has seen an increasingly a high, uh, increasingly higher correlation with equity markets, and, and specifically. It trades with about an 85% correlation to higher beta stocks. That is the last place you want to be at, at a time when the global economy is slowing, right. risks are rising. Right. So, uh, yeah, I think Bitcoin gets cut in half over the next 12 months. Wow. Yikes. Wow. Okay. okay. So ninth Whoa. inning of the commodity story, second inning of the growth slowdown. Michael, this is why we bring you on. Thanks for your point of view. We really appreciate right. it.